Vaporeon is the best at what it does. Unlike every other evolution we've talked about, you may have picked up a theme. A lot of them aren't the best at what they do. Some of them are just straight bad, like Umbreon, for example. Some of them are really good, like Sylveon, but they aren't at the top of their game because Garnivore is better. Some of them are good space fillers when you don't have enough team members for certain areas and you need that berry type. But Vaporeon is not like any other evolution. It is the best at its skill, Ingredient Magnet. In fact, it's so good, it beats the best ingredient specialists if the circumstances require it. Welcome back to another Pokemon Sleep video. It's Brovini here. Now, Vaporeon is quite a complex one to understand, so I will try to break it down into major points. We can try to keep it simple, which is what I will do at the start of the video, but towards the end of the video, expect a lot of numbers, expect a lot of examples, comparing skill specialists to skill specialists, comparing skill specialists to ingredient specialists. First, the major tips on how to actually use a good Vaporeon. Number one, it has to be as high a main skill level as it can be. So for example, 21 ingredients at level six. If you don't have the main skill seeds or at least skill level up M and S to invest in a Vaporeon to get to a high main skill, this discussion is unimportant because it's better for you to just focus on using ingredient specialists, which will provide you with the right amount of ingredients and in bigger numbers without having to invest main skill seeds you're going to need main skill seeds if you're going to optimize, really maximize the returns from your Vaporeon. These are some of the stats you might be looking for for a good Vaporeon, helping bonus, helping speed, skill trigger M, S, even inventory is fine. Other things like berry finding, that's also good. Or nature, speed up or main skill chance up, these are all excellent skill specialist stats. So try to avoid having stats that are main skill chance down or speed of help down. Otherwise, any of these other stats are good. Anything with speed of help or main skill chance up. Point number two, just like any skill specialist, like we've talked about Jolteon, we've talked about Sylveon, just like any skill specialist, you have to be collecting often. In fact, more often than how often the calculator says it's going to trigger the skill. Otherwise, you're not going to get the numbers that the calculator says you will. So for example, with almost perfect stats of a Vaporeon at level 50, I'm expecting to get seven triggers in a day. If you're not logging in 15, 20 times a day, you're not gonna get these numbers. Then this whole discussion breaks down. Then maybe you should focus on an ingredient specialist with inventory up instead, or even a berry specialist with ingredient magnet, even though it doesn't trigger quite as much, but at least you can manage to, to collect all of the ingredients from the trigger because you only need to log in maybe four or five times to collect the two triggers is expected to trigger in a day. And that is why ingredient and berry specialists that have the ingredient magnet skill can't be ignored either because they can be good if you're not logging in that much in a day. Although they're not gonna see as much value in you investing the main skill seeds compared to a Vaporeon, if you do manage to log in like 20 times a day to collect those at least seven triggers. Point number three. Now I've set up on the calculator here a number of different Pokemon that I'm going to compare to in a moment, compare Vaporeon to in a moment. One thing to note, and a lot of you might already know this, is Slarking behaves like a skill specialist, even though it's a berry specialist. It's pre-evolution, Slarkoth, Vigoroth behave like berry specialists, but once it becomes Slarking, its skill trigger rate is 11%. So every production, it has an 11% chance of triggering that main skill, which is very high. In fact, the skill trigger rate per production is higher than even Vaporeon. Vaporeon only has a 10% chance in comparison. It's still very high, it's just a little bit, bit lower than Slarking. But because Slarking is a very slow Pokemon, overall it works out that Vaporeon is going to trigger more in a day than Slarking. So among skill specialists, and I'm counting Slarking as one, Vaporeon's main competitors are Slarking and Heracross. And we know this if we go to the Pokedex in the Rain and X calculator. If we filter all the Pokemon out for only Ingredient Magnet S, 
and then we sort by expected skill count, this is how we know which Pokemon triggers the most for that skill in a day. And Vaporeon is at the top. You can also vary the stats. For example, I can, uh, I can put in helping bonus, helping speed and skill trigger M, but the ranking doesn't change too much. Heracross coming second place to Vaporeon with Slarking coming third place, five to six triggers in a day. However, it does change slightly. If one of these skills become very finding, you'll see that actually Slarking becomes more triggering than Heracross. And that's more to do with the fact that Slarking has a bit more inventory if you fully evolve it from Slark off. But that's not the focus of the video today for all intents and purposes. Slarking and Heracross have pretty much the same skill trigger count in a day. Point number four, before we dive into the numbers, is that Eevee itself is a competitor for the same skill. Eevee itself also does Ingredient Magnet. In fact, it is just behind Slarking in its skill trigger amount. Although, to be fair, it is at the bottom of all skill specialists that have the Ingredient Magnet skill. As you can see, well, there's only three, unless we count Slarking, then there's four. But the reason why I want to bring up this point is that some of you might find this helpful is if you can't decide which evolution to evolve into at this stage, why don't you just run it as Eevee? You can run Eevee as like a mini Vaporeon to see if you like that skill. In fact, if you're just about to hit Snowdrop Tundra, Eevee happens to be favorite berry there too, which works out well, especially if your Eevee has berry finding S. The only catch of using Eevee is that it's inferior to using Slarking since they're both normal type berries, but Slarking farms one more and they have pretty much the same speed. So if you have a berry finding S Slarking, it's farming three berries at a time at the same speed as a berry finding S Eevee that has two berries at a time. And Slarking has a higher skill trigger rate. So this tip is really just for the people who aren't ready to commit their Eevee into an evolution I personally know one person who's invested their Eevee to level 50 who still hasn't evolved it yet. But if you were wondering, the numbers do work out nicely for Eevee at Snowdrop Tundra. In fact, the berry strength is better than Vaporeon. So just think of keeping the Eevee unevolved as a way to test the waters. But when you're ready, you really should choose an evolution. Unless you're waiting for like G-Max Eevee to, to be released in this game, which I don't think will ever happen, but maybe. Besides Snowdrop Tundra, Vaporeon is going to be superior to Eevee in every other area. Point number five, please use Vaporeon properly. By that, I mean, if you are selling your ingredients because you just got way too much ingredient, then you're not optimizing your game. You need to switch out that Vaporeon, swap in something that focuses on the ingredients that you need, like a mono ingredient, Deli Bird or Charizard, whatever it is that you need, something specific to what you need, rather than getting all these random ingredients that you don't need. Or if in total you just have way too much ingredients anyway, so then just change to a berry specialist. You don't want to be reaching your ingredient bag limit. And my personal recommendation, just based on my own experience, this is not mathematical in any way, is if your bag is about 50% full, then it's okay, absolutely good to run Ingredient Magnet. You want to top up the bag, hopefully land a few ingre good ingredients. But if you're about 80, 90% full, you need to change out the Ingredient Magnet Specialist. If you end up having to sell your ingredients, it's not, you're not optimizing the gameplay and you're not getting much dream shards from selling your ingredients. It's only like four to seven dream shards per ingredient that you sell, unless you're sl selling Slowpoke Tails, which would be a very bad move. But if you sell Slowpoke Tails, they're worth about 14 shards. And this point is actually the same as using ingredient tickets. Because if you think about it, Ingredient Ticket also gives you random assortment of ingredients. In fact, Vaporeon is just an Ingredient Ticket used multiple times. If the ingredients are random, you want to use these when your bag is low in ingredients. You don't want to be at about 80-90% full in your ingredient bag and then using this hoping to get that one egg that you need to complete a dish. You should have used it a long time ago so then after you fill the bag 60-70% full, then you use a focus ingredient specialist in order to get exactly what you need for your dishes. 
So this is point number six is that don't rely on Vaporeon to give you that one ingredient that you need. Just like you shouldn't be using the ingredient ticket. If you're just missing a few corn that you're waiting for to complete your dish, you should have a beware out on the field to, to get that corn as opposed to using ingredient magnet or ingredient ticket. But what you can use Vaporeon very effectively for is filling up your pot, your extra ingredients. That's easy to do with Vaporeon. It just so happens that at the same time, you're going to get some ingredients that you need, as well as maybe stocking up Slowpoke Tails that you can use uh, as extra ingredients at the start of the new week. We'll come back to th this point in a moment. Or in some special situations, and we're going to focus on the top four dishes here, for salads, there is a huge variety of ingredients that you can use to cook those four recipes. In fact, if you count the number of different ingredients, so oil, corn, tomatoes, potato, that's four, leek, beans, mushroom, ginger, that's another four, that's eight different ingredients, tails, herbs, now oil does repeat, so that's 10 ingredients, 11, 12, there are 12 ingredients out of a total of 16 possible ingredients that you could get in this game. So because there's a huge variety, Vaporeon will help you cover these dishes really well. However, if we compare that to curries or desserts, if you count up the best dishes and how many different ingredients that they need, and I'm going to use the first three dishes here because from, from this dish onwards, the recipe bonus tends to be a significant amount lower, yet takes up more pot space. So tail dishes take up less pot space, doesn't get a huge recipe bonus, but the base strength of the ingredient is quite strong. So 25%, so a small bonus to a strong ingredient, it's still a lot. So that's why tail dish can rank quite high, despite not taking up a lot of pot space. So for this, for curries, I'm going to just take the first three dishes and in, amongst the first three dishes, only nine ingredients are used out of the 16. Now you might think differently to me. You might think that ninja curry is quite good too. That's okay. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Maybe you don't have a pot size of 77. That's okay. Then you would take these three and count up the ingredients and go, should I be using a magnet? If you count ninja curry, if you decide to count these three and maybe even spicy leek curry, maybe limber corn stew as well. So if you count up the ingredient variety and you need a lot of variety out of the 16 possible ingredients that the game has, then Vaporeon once again can be quite good. Now, if we look at desserts, once again, let's look at the top dessert dishes. So I'm going to take the first four dishes that have the highest recipe bonus, 48% and 35% at base level. Out of these, only eight ingredients are used. So there's a lot of repeats. There's eggs that repeat, milk that repeats, corn that repeats, apples that repeat. So because of all this repetition for desserts, ingredient magnet is a bit more hit and miss you, and, and more miss than hit. So you should be using more ingredient specialists. So the situation is going to change as more dishes get added. So that's why I'm saying this is how you would assess whether Vaporeon is good. And you're going to have to do that yourself in the future as new things get released. But for now, salads have the best use for ingredient magnet because of the need for variety. Of course, if you haven't unlocked some ingredients, you're going to have to redo this assessment yourself. You're just going to have to take out ingredients that you don't have. Let's say you don't have leek, mushroom, corn, tails, and maybe you don't have eggs. So you're just starting the game. Then you look at the variety of the ingredients that you need for the top dishes that you can make and ask yourself whether you should be running an ingredient magnet. So if you thought that was complex, it unfortunately doesn't get better from here. So next is, I said I'd come back to this, is Slowpoke Tails. We've talked about this in another video before, where we said that the current Tails farmer are just not very good at their job. So if you have a good Vaporeon, could Vaporeon provide you with the Tails that you might need? Now, while we're not actually making this comparison today, not specifically for Slowpoke Tails, I will bring up the fact that my mind has changed about how to use Tails. About three to six months ago, I would say, why would you use your slowpoke tails as extra ingredients? That makes no sense at all. You want to be using your tails so that you can get recipe and level bonus from it. 
And look, you can still do that. And that's still a good strategy. But if you use your slowpoke tails as extra ingredients for a strong dish that you were already cooking, and you're pretty sure you might, you maybe you've got Dedenne running and you can pretty much guarantee or, or be pretty sure that you can crit. If you dump all of your slowpoke tails, that will give you a extra tasty strength of the slowpoke tails times three. And slowpoke tails are at base strength already three times stronger than the average ingredient. If you look at the strength of the average ingredient, they, they hover around 100, maybe 120. If you get to the rare ingredients, they do go a bit higher. Things like leek, 185. Potato drops down a bit to 124. So tails gives you 342. So at base strength, they give you th almost three times the average ingredient. So for the same space that it occupies in the pot, if it crits, you're going to get a huge boost to a new week. So another good strategy to power up a new week as you're hoarding these tails from your ingredient magnet. And let's say it's salad week and you're cooking a green grass salad that's at fifth level 55 with a huge 300% bonus because of the recipe and level bonus plus the remaining size of the pot beyond the 62 that you've occupied for the green grass salad. If you filled a hundred of them with tails, the tails themselves, so let's say 342 strength per tail, let's say you can put a hundred tails in the pot, the tails themselves will give you 34,000 in strength. That's without area bonus, um, but I haven't included area bonus in any of these calculations since it affects everything the same way anyway, which is even more than the actual dish itself with all the recipe and level bonus. So that's how strong slowpoke tails are. So if you start a new week and your first dish gets a crit with this slowpoke tail extra ingredient plus this number here, which is the base dish with the bonus, with the recipe and level bonus, that's a huge boost to your new week. So my recommendation now is since slowpoke tail dishes currently are fading from the meta because of the new dishes that are getting released with huge recipe bonus. The tails that you've saved up can be used to top up your strongest dish, especially if you're prepared to crit that dish, maybe by running a Dedenne. Uh, just be aware that the Dedenne's skill trigger rate cannot carry over from Sunday to Monday. So you have to look at tr tricks to make Dedenne trigger on Monday before you even cook your first dish where you might plan to have a huge amount of slowpoke tails dumped into the dish. But if in the future, more tail dishes get released, that might power creep again, things might change. So yeah, Vaporeon is the best in its skill, but is it actually worth a spot on your team? Is it worth swapping out an ingredient specialist or is it worth swapping out a berry specialist? How are we gonna measure that? Now at this point, I should mention that even though Slarking and Heracross are at the same tier level, Slarking gets to evolve twice, so it, because it's the third evolution, its main skill is already level 3, saving you two main seeds. I don't recommend Heracross for this skill. So in actual fact, I'm just going to remove Heracross from the calculations, from the comparisons altogether. So how do we compare Vaporeon's ingredient magnet to another team member on the team? Well, I would say that Ingredient Magnet is actually just an ingredient specialist that kind of does everything. That's what it is. So the best way to compare it is to compare how much ingredients an ingredient Pokemon, an ingredient specialist can get versus a skill specialist that does Ingredient Magnet. So I've picked out some of the best or some of the most common or preferred ingredient specialists. I've chosen Triple Egg Deli Bird, Triple Sausage Charizard, a lot of people run Charizards because it's, it's a fan favorite. And then Dragonite, currently the best ingredient specialist in the game. But when I say best, I mean the ingredient strength at base. Of course, at the end of the day, if you need to cook something that doesn't need herbs, don't bring Dragonite that has only herbs. That makes no sense. But let's assume that everyone is being assessed at this in the same way. So we're not going to apply any recipe bonus. So you can see in my settings here that I've got no dishes set 
for cooking. So every ingredient is being compared at base strength. So now we need to look at the numbers and just a disclaimer, there are some bugs in the ingredient magnet skill at this stage. I have informed Rainanix about this. He is looking to fix it. So this part is just explaining to you what the bugs are right now. The bugs may not be there anymore by the time you guys start looking at this. But the first thing is the ingredient strength from ingredient magnet, which is tabulated here, are not given any recipe bonus, which is fine because right now I'm not using recipe bonus. Recipe bonus or level bonus from the dish are not being applied to ingredient magnets. So they may look a bit weaker than they should be. Also, they do not get crit chance. They are just being applied as base strength to the total score, the total strength of ingredient magnet Pokemon. The maker of the calculator is aware of this. It is planned to be fixed, but for the purposes of today, I will actually need to use an Excel spreadsheet to show you guys the true numbers. Now, just so you know how this calculator works. Since I've got zero area bonus, and I'll show you my settings. I've got zero area bonus in all areas. I've got zero recipe and level bonus. This number here is how many ingredients the Pokemon farms. This is, doesn't include the skill, just the base milk. So I've got two milks here on this Vaporeon. It on average, in one day farms 25.77 milks so 25.77 and we know that the strength of milk is 98 so 25.77 times 98 should give us this is the total base strength from that ingredient but there's a problem this number is not the same as this number and the reason that is is because well the calculator also accounts for a critical chance because there's a 10% chance to crit on a normal day we should be multiplying that by 1.1 2778 but you can see it still doesn't quite match this number and the reason is because Sunday's crit is three times so we need to look at the weighted average of the crit so if we go back to 25 milks times the strength of the milk which gives us 2500 total strength from just feeding milk to Snorlax, but now also include the weighted average because Sunday crits with a higher chance and gives you more strength. And that weighted average works out to be a multiplier of 1.17143. 1 and you don't, you don't need to remember this number, but I'm just showing you how this calculator actually works. It comes out to be 2,958 and that's exactly what we get. So that is how the calculator works, but there's a problem. This calculator is therefore giving you the average strength if you cooked every meal up to Sunday, including the chance to crit, then averages out the strength for seven days. So it divides by seven for this one day, which is not what we want. We want the strength at the start of the week. If Sunday crits, it doesn't affect us too much because it only applies the strength to Sunday. Obviously, you could be doing bugs that carry over the dinner of Sunday to Monday, so then it kind of averages out better. But ultimately, this ingredient strength is overvalued because Sunday is incorporated into this calculation. Fortunately, it doesn't affect our calculations too much for what I need to do next. So we worked out how much milk strength Vaporeon is going to give us, 2,500. So that was the 25.77 times 98, which is the strength of milk. And of course, the bulk of the strength from Vaporeon is the skill. So we have to look at the ingredient magnet and how much strength that provides. Now this one here, I take the 7.24 triggers in a day. So that one is accurate. So that's how much Vaporeon, a perfect Vaporeon would trigger. And I assume that it's at level six main skill, which means 21 ingredients will drop. But how do we know which ingredients will drop? We don't. So what we do is we take the average of ingredients because there's an equal chance of each ingredient to drop. If we take again, a weighted average. So what we do is we look at the strength of every single ingredient, add them all up and then divide by 16, which is the number of ingredients there are, the number comes out to be 136.6. And that is the average strength of 
every ingredient incorporated. Of course, if they release a new ingredient, this number may change. So in other words, if I have 21 ingredients from the level six main skill, and each ingredient is on average worth about 137 strength, and Vaporeon gives me seven triggers in a day, the total strength from ingredient magnet is 20,000. And if we add those two together, we get about 23,000 in ingredient strength in a day. What we can do is we can multiply that number by 1.17143, which was the number I told you about, the crit chance on average, how much extra strength will it provide? But of course, you gotta understand that this is a bit overvalued. So you need to undervalue this number here. So we get about 27,000 in strength. And then if we apply the best recipe bonus of a dish. So if we take green grass salad, for example, the max level is 55 and at level 55, including both the recipe bonus and the level bonus, green grass salad will give you an additional 300% in strength so that means that we need to multiply this number by 4.011. So if every ingredient could be optimized from Vaporeon, then this is being very optimistic here. If theoretically every ingredient that Vaporeon farms is exactly what you need to cook the best dish, which is unlikely, you're going to get 109,000 strength in a day, including the chance to crit. And now we repeat the same process with the competitors. So I've got Slarking, Heracross, Dragonite, Eevee, Charizard, Delibird, and I have ranked them in descending order of total strength. So while this number in itself isn't accurate for anything, it does give us an order from best to worst in terms of the total ingredient strength per day. And it's probably no surprise that Vaporeon is just at the top of the game it outshines everyone else assuming that every ingredient can be put to use. The problem is that not every ingredient will be able to be put to use. So this is where numbers aren't gonna help you. You just have to decide when to run ingredient magnet and those times should be when you need variety or when you have low ingredient bag and then swap to mono ingredient specialists like Dragonite with only herbs or Deli Bird with only eggs so that you can get exactly what you need for, for the exact recipes. And that is how you're going to optimize the game. So this chart doesn't say that Deli Bird is bad. This chart just says that Vaporeon farms a lot of ingredients. You just need to know how to optimally use them. So Vaporeon fits very well into the mono ingredient meta which I've explained in another video some time ago now, and this still applies. This video is very good. If you haven't seen this one yet, make sure you go and see it. I'll leave a link in the description below. This is what Vaporeon is going to complement because your ingredient specialist will farm exactly what you need after Vaporeon is done dumping a lot of random ingredients on you. And I also recommend this chart here, which Banana Tanks made for us, uh, it's available under quick guides in my discord which basically tells you how you should focus farming for ingredient specialists that are focused on specific ingredients mono ingredients now do note that things may change once level 60 comes along because all of the ingredient specialists suddenly get a huge bump on how much ingredients they're going to output which should make Vaporeon seemingly a bit worse, but we've also seen main skill levels go up like charge strength S and M. So we don't know how it's going to balance into the future, but just bear that in mind that once level 60 comes along, things may change around a bit, but for now, we're just gonna focus on level 30. Therefore, for now, Vaporeon is at the top of the base ingredient strength game. Now, one thing I would like to mention is that for this chart, you should note that for ingredient magnet to give you huge numbers like Vaporeon, level six main skill, absolutely needed. I did give Delibird and Charizard level six main skill, but it didn't improve the ingredient strength that much. Look at the difference in the numbers. Delibird getting level six main skill, which is 21 ingredients per trigger, only gave us about 4,000 strength from the magnet alone. Whereas Vaporeon gave us 20,000 in strength. So about five times stronger 
to have your main skill seeds invested in a Vaporeon than it is in a Deli Bird. Deli Bird strength will come in the actual ingredients that it farms, the triple eggs, the mono eggs, or whatever it is that you've got on your ingredient list. So I wouldn't recommend you giving main seeds to the Pokemon that you don't actually spend much time with. So for example, a mono ingredient, Charizard, Deli Bird, you're only using them as needed to complete recipes. So they're not really worth your main seeds. Whereas something that you bring with you along all the time, even a berry specialist that you tend you, you tend to bring everywhere with you. So for example, I've got a really good Walrein. So my Walrein is actually at level six for ingredient magnet, even though it doesn't trigger very much two times a day. I'm always getting the max potential out of the Walrein. So every week I, I get a lot of ingredients from, from Walrein because I use it all the time. So how much time you spend with the Pokemon should be a consideration on whether you should put the main seeds, not just how good the main skill actually is. The great thing about Vaporeon is that when it when the skill triggers too much, you can swap it out sooner and then you bring in another berry specialist. So there is benefit in seeding it. Whereas if you do that with Charizard, well, once you're done farming sausages, you're not gonna leave it on the team to try and trigger the main skill once or twice more and, and then end up having way too much sausages. And that's because, well, there's a pot size limit. It's not like you can keep feeding sausages to the Snorlax. For berries, they go into sneaky snacking, which means they continue to provide Snorlax with strength. So that's why it's almost always all right to seed your best berry specialist that you bring everywhere with you, since they can be used on the team all the time. So for those of you who are free to play, who don't run a good camp ticket most of the weeks, it's a good idea to rotate Vaporeon with maybe a Glaceon because Glaceon expands pot and then Vaporeon fills that pot. So that's another strategy you can employ. And now on to the age old question. Should I focus on cooking or should I focus on berry farming? This question has been asked since the start of the game. It's just generally been accepted that berry specialists are at the top of the meta. And the great thing is there's no pot limit. It's not like you got to worry about reaching the pot limit with berry specialists. They just keep feeding Snorlax. However, ingredients cannot be ignored. Dishes can be very powerful. It just takes a lot more thinking, a lot more planning and consideration for them to be as good as your berry specialists. So in terms of optimizing, you can't just do berry farming. So how good is having some of the best recipes being cooked all the time? Let's go and take a look at the recipe calculator and have a look at the best dishes that we can cook. Currently of all the dishes across the three different dish types, the strongest dish of all is flour gift macaron. If we give it 55 dish level, it gets a boost of 301%. In other words, a total strength of 37 and a half thousand in total strength. Now I understand that 77 is a big pot size, so not everyone will be, will be able to achieve this. You would either, either have to run a good camp ticket or an expand pot Pokemon. But let's assume that you're able to run Glaceon and Vaporeon and able to cook this dish three times a day for seven days a week. Well, the level 55 strength of Macaron was 37,490. If we include the chance to crit, which is 1.17143, multiplied by that number, this is what we expect. And then if you cook it three times a day, this is the strength, including the chance to crit. So if you could theoretically get enough ingredients and exactly what you need to cook the macarons, you should be able to get 132,000 total strength, which will be compared to a team of Typhlosion with a healer, each Typhlosion providing about 50,000 strength. And these are really good Typhlosions. They all have very finding and helping bonus. At level 50, they provide 52,000 strength. They would be providing a lot more if we also give it favorite berry, 85,000 strength. But the question is, is the 131,000 enough for you to replace these Typhlosions on the team? Vaporeon alone with seven triggers 
each one giving you 21 ingredients only provides 147 ingredients in a day. The number of ingredients needed in that macaron dish is 231. So we need to maybe have one more ingredient specialist on the team to make sure that we can cover the entire dish three times a day. So the question would be, is it worth trading off the strength of two really good, very specialists in order for you to cook that dish? So in this case, without favorite berry, Typhlosion provides 100,000 strength. If you can make sure that you can cook three macaron dish in a day, that's actually better than Typhlosion. It's not better if it's favorite berry. So favorite berry, berry finding S, in my opinion, is still at the top of the game. But today I only have one very good well rain, one very good for alligator. I'm still hunting a Typhlosion and they don't even cover the same area. So I only have one or two favorite berry berry specialists per area. So without favorite berry for the third and fourth slot, I would run ingredient specialists to make up for that strength. Until the day comes where you can actually achieve a team like this and don't bet on it, it's not going to happen. <laughs> but until the day this happens, you're going to need two ingredient specialists, maybe one of them being the Vaporeon in order to optimize your farming throughout the week. But I guess what's funny about this whole video is that after all of that discussion, we come back to that the berry specialists are actually just as good as trying to optimize ingredients, but it takes no brain power to run a good berry specialist. It takes a lot of thinking and worry about ingredients, not making the recipe to run good ingredient specialists or ingredient magnet specialists, unless an event gives you 1.5 times the dish power. So which is happening in the upcoming flower festival event, in which case dishes do look a lot stronger, maybe in some cases even better than berry specialists, but not enough to replace an entire team. Because even if we multiplied this number now by 1.5, 197, well, compared to berry specialists with favorite berry, it still is not worth you swapping out four team members in order to make up those ingredients. And here are some future predictions. The meta is going to shift. Vaporeon could go either way. It could become better or worse. We, we don't know. And why that is, is if more rare ingredients get released that are very hard to farm, something like Slowpoke Tails, very hard to farm. Well, Vaporeon will be your main method to get those ingredients. But if too many new ingredients get released, the pool of ingredients get diluted, we're going to have trouble getting the right ingredients for the right dish. Because relatively, the variety is becoming bigger and bigger, and we can't focus down, we can't focus the Vaporeon down to get exactly what we need. Now, I covered a lot of points about Vaporeon today, and I'm drained. <laughs> I spent days researching Vaporeon, doing comparisons, making sure the numbers are checking out on the calculator. I spent days doing this, and in the end, I found that, well, very specialists are still very good. However, after this video, I would say that if anybody ever asks you which evolution they should invest their very good EV into, I think Vaporeon makes a very good contender, especially if that person is always struggling to get ingredients. But I feel like this recommendation kind of just circles back to the original recommendation. We've always said that if you need ingredients, go for Vaporeon. It's just that now we know Vaporeon is extremely good at what it does. You just gotta make sure you collect those skills as frequently as possible. Thank you for watching guys. Don't forget that you can join the channel now with the join button down below to support the channel.